Hello, my name is Una Pale, uh, and I will present you work done at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne uh, on the hyperdimensional computing. So we worked on the HD Torch, a library for accelerating hyperdimensional computing with GPUs for design space exploration. So what is hyperdimensional computing? It is a new machine learning approach inspired by neuroscience and based on representing data in a form of uh, hypervectors. Um, more than 10,000 dimensions, for example, rather than uh, simple numbers. It has several useful algebraic properties. So, for example, any two randomly generated vectors are with high probability orthogonal. And at the same time, if we sum up two vectors, they will be more similar to their result than any other random vector. So if we have a, for example, classification uh, problem and we need to learn, the simplest way of learning is done by bitwise accumulating all vectors uh, representing data from the same class. So for example, on this picture, we have uh, three vectors from the same class. We bitwise sum them and normalize, meaning if more than half of them was one, the final bit value is one. And we get a model vector that represents this class. When we need to uh, give a prediction, we encode the current data window into a vector and then compare the current vector with all model vectors representing different classes. Comparing means calculating, for example, Hemming or cosine distance and giving the prediction of the most similar model vector. All of this enables several advantages of the HD computing, both on the software and hardware side. From the software side, for example, it represents distributed and redundant data representation, but more importantly, enables us continuous online learning, meaning we don't have to stay, save all the previous data to retrain the model once we have a bit of new samples, but we, would, we just add them uh, to the new model vectors. Uh, it is also very easy to implement semi-supervised learning or distributed and encrypted learning. On the hardware side, it's highly parallelizable, which enables also high energy efficiency. Because of its distributedness and redundancy, it is also robust to noise. And all of these reasons lead us to um, making it very interesting for IoT and wearable devices. So what is the problem? Um, the problem comes when we uh, use HD computing on a highly demanding machine learning problems, where its performance in terms of accuracy is not on par with other machine learning algorithms. Uh, moreover, there is poor, almost no support in standard machine learning frameworks, such as PyTorch or TensorFlow for designing and exploring the HGC algorithms. So we worked on the HD Torch, an open source PyTorch based library, which also has a CUDA extensions for hypervector operations. We analyzed the accuracy, runtime and memory consumption on four uh, typical benchmark datasets. And we achieved significant performance gain for both training and inference and also significant memory reduction. But in the end, we decided to test it also on a more demanding uh, use case of epilepsy detection um, problem, because it also represents a large and highly unbalanced uh, data set on which we notice the significant drop in the performance of the HD computing when compared to the, um, for example, random forest. So how does a typical HD learning workflow look like? Um, there are several ways how it can be done, but the basic and most common one is um, based on the fact that initially, at the beginning, we have to initialize um, base uh, HD vectors that represent all the features and feature values that we will have. Then if we have a time series data, we discretize it, for example, into windows and extract the features. Um, and then we need to encode these features and their values into um, HD vectors representing each of these data windows. And we do it by using two operations, binding and bundling. So binding, in this case, when we have uh, binary vectors, is actually XORing. So we XOR the HD vector that represents this specific feature and with the vector that represents the value of that feature. And then we repeat it for all the features and their values. And then we bundle them or we sum them and bitwise sum and normalize to get in the end the uh, one vector, HD vector, that represents this data window. Learning is then in the most simplest way, as mentioned before, done by naively accumulating all data windows or data vectors belonging to the same class. 
or in a bit more of a sophisticated way, we can, before adding it to the class vector, to the class model vector, we weight each sample by the weight that defines the novelty of this data sample. And this can prevent um, overfitting with the more uh, common um, class uh, patterns uh, in case of, for example, very unbalanced data set. Azure Torch uh, primarily uses native PyTorch primitives for most of its functionality. However, we also designed Azure Torch Plus, which uses uh, custom CUDA functions to accelerate some of the key HDC operations. Namely, we implemented bit packing and unpacking from uh, one byte Boolean values to uh, packed bit vectors to improve memory uh, efficiency and also horizontal and vertical summation for uh, summing ways of uh, packed bit vectors um, to make it more uh, efficient as well. In terms of experimental setup, we used, as mentioned, four benchmark datasets from the UCI repository. They're interesting because they cover a wide range of sizes, complexities, and use cases. But we also used a more um, challenging, larger, and highly unbalanced dataset. Uh, in this case, epilepsy detection uh, CHVMIT dataset, which uh, contains more than 980 hours of recording with the 180 seizures over 24 subjects. This data set is so big that um, when we want to run HD computing using the CPU, uh, it is almost impossible to run it. So we had two subsets um, of the data set. One was much smaller data set containing only some non-seizure data, 10 times more non-seizure than seizure. And also a subset, uh, and actually a whole data set that was uh, divided into one hour files. Uh, as a testing environment, we used the NVIDIA Tesla uh, GPU. We implemented both classical and online learning in the HD Torch. And we had three algorithms as a state-of-the-art comparison. So first was the random forest as a reference for accuracy uh, for the state-of-the-art machine learning approaches. We had Excel HD, which is a TensorFlow-based framework for uh, HDC acceleration, but fortunately it's not openly available. So we only could compare its accuracy and numbers from their paper. And we also use original online HD implementation in the, part in the PyTorch. Okay, so let's look at the results now. First, we compare the accuracies between Random Forest as a, our gold standard, then online and classic um, HD learning implementation with the HD Torch Plus, and also two um, state-of-the-art implementations, so Excel HD and online HD. First, we see that uh, online HD outperforms classical HD, which was um, expected. We also see that our HD Torch implementation has similar accuracy to two implementations found in the literature. But we also see that Random Forest outperforms uh, hyperdimensional computing in all datasets. And this means that we need um, <coughs> further improvements of the hyperdimensional computing. And this also necessitates the need for a framework for efficient design space exploration of those algorithms. So next, we wanted to analyze the time or the speed up when compared to the CPU. And we did it for four benchmark data sets representing different colors for both classic learning, online learning, and also inference. And results are represented with the bar graphs. Um, and what we can see is that first, um, HD Torch using the PyTorch already provides a speed up uh, for both classical online uh, training and inference. But if we implement the CUDA extensions, this improves the speed up to even 140x, 10x, and 130x. What we also notice here is that the online HD speed up is significantly lower. And this is due to the limited parallelization because in online HD, we have to add sample by sample and multiply it with a weight that defines its novelty for every single sample in instead of um, doing this in the batches. Then if we look at the memory consumption, as shown with the x-axis on the right and the lines, we can see that utilizing HD Torch without CUDA extensions do not reduce the memory. 
But if we implement the extensions, like bit packing, it actually reduces memory up to 10 times, out of which 10x is by bit packing and 2x from the reduced intermediate tensors. We also wanted to test some of the hyperparameters, main one which is actually the hypervector uh, dimension D. And here we represent the results for all uh, four benchmark datasets as an average. So what we can see is that if we reduce dimension D, this also drastically reduces the runtime and increases the uh, speed up possible. But it also comes at the cost of um, decreasing the accuracy. A good thing is that uh, there is a accuracy saturation by increasing D, and after a certain uh, value of D, there is almost no improvement to the accuracy, meaning that we can find the optimum between the speed up and the accuracy. As we mentioned before, for online HD, we are limited with the speed up because of the limited parallelization due to the fact that we are adding sample by sample. So here we decided to test what happens actually with the accuracy and speed up if we do batch data into a batches. And what we can see is that if we increase the batch size, uh, the speed up increases, uh, especially for the HD Torch Plus. Uh, we also see a saturation after a certain uh, batch size um, uh, window. But we also see that this comes at the cost of an accuracy drop, which happens after a certain batch size. Um, good thing is that the, the, there is an optimal value for the speed up and the accuracy. And this is probably something that has to be tuned for the exact use case. In the end, we want to present results for the epilepsy detection use case, as it is more challenging than the other um, benchmark datasets. But we managed to also achieve a significant speed up for all stages. Uh, especially for the HD Torch Plus, where we even have up to 80x uh, uh, speed up for um, all of the state, almost all of the stages. And then when we compare accuracy, we uh, tested it on two um, dataset preparations. So the first one being the smaller one, typically used one, where we have only uh, 10 times more non-seizure than seizure data. So no, not all non-seizure data. And here we see that random forest, classical HD, and online HD perform equally well. But then when we use the full data set, full unbalanced data set that was also segmented in one hour files, we see a significant drop in the classical HD performance. Uh, online HD is not that bad, but this definitely signifies the need to assess performance of HD computing, not only on the subsets of data sets as it is usually done in the literature, but on full data sets in order to get the full picture of the HD computing performance. So to conclude, um, we developed an HD Torch, an open source Python bridge ADC library that enables a significant uh, runtime speed up for both classical and online HD learning, as well as uh, inference. And if we implement CUDA extensions, we also uh, reduce the memory uh, up to 10 times. We tested it also not only on the four benchmark datasets, but also on the epilepsy detection uh, data set and show that performance resulting from training on a subset of data, which is a typical approach in the literature, does not necessarily generalize to the training on the entire data set, and it has to be taken into account when evaluating AG Torch algorithms. And in future, we believe that such libraries can enable further optimization of HDC algorithms to potentially help them reach performance of state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms. But of course, support for more HDC algorithms is needed and has to be implemented. Um, thank you. Uh, this project was funded um, by a few um, funding projects. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out and ask questions. Thank you.